before we discuss the index method, we need to briefly have a look at what's meant by an exception. Imagine when you've got a computer program and the file system, and the idea is we wish to actually read from a file on the file system. Now, of course, we want the information from the file system to come into the computer, and of course we would need to write a computer program to do that. So the computer program needs to interact with the file system. And of course the file system would be controlled by the operating system, and in fact it might be further controlled by a system administrator who looks after all of the files that are on the file system. But your program wishes to read data from this particular file system, from a specific file. Now let's say something goes wrong with the file system. Let's say the system administrator, for whatever reason, accidentally removes the file that your program was supposed to take the data from. Or let's say the hardware breaks down with respect to the file system. Now, your computer program has to work on the assumption that there's going to be no problems with the file system. But problems can occur. And in fact, we're going to say here that the file system has completely disappeared. Perhaps somebody's accidentally unplugged some RAID disk summers that you were attempting to read data from. Now what will happen is your program has worked on the assumption that the file is present, but it clearly isn't present now. So the computer system is designed to throw an exception, and Python itself can do what's called RAID exceptions, and we'll leave what that means to a different video. Thing we're really talking about here is your program has a normal flow when everything's fine and everything's working. And when something disrupts that normal flow, such as a file disappearing, you can get problems with your code crashing. So what you have to do, you have to arrange that your code doesn't crash if somebody accidentally deletes the file from the file system that you were taking data from. Let's consider other examples of exceptions that can occur when code is executed. We can have a situation where the computer program attempts to divide by zero. Now this is not a number, so what will happen? An exception will actually be thrown, and your program could, under these circumstances, simply quit. We mustn't allow this to happen. We have to do something just in case the data throws up an attempt to divide by zero. So we as programmers have to say, well, you know, this could happen. What can we do to stop the program actually crashing under these circumstances? Other things we can be concerned about is attempting to convert a non-digit string to an integer. So, for example, let's just say you are allowing the user to enter from the keyboard and you are expecting them to enter integers using the keys 0 through to 9, so 1 and 9 would be 19, for example. But let's say that they accidentally hit the O instead of a 9, or the I instead of a 9. That string, then, does not have all digits. So if we attempt to convert it to an integer, the program says, well, how do you expect me to convert letters to numbers, to integers? So you will have an exception. Now, there are many more examples, but I just wanted to point out some examples of exceptions before we go on to look at the index method. Let's consider the main points of an exception. An exception is an event which occurs during the execution of a program that distributes the normal flow of the program's instructions. When Python encounters a situation that it cannot cope with, it raises an exception, such as an attempt to divide by zero. In Python, an exception is an object that represents an error. Now, we'll cover this in more detail in a later video. This is just a brief overview of exceptions for the benefit of trying to understand the index method, which we'll discuss in a moment. A Python program must either handle the exception immediately, otherwise the program will terminate and quit. So what we have, we have a circumstance where the program would normally flow, the file system's working fine, the file's in place, but something can happen and an exception is raised. If an exception is raised, the 
program simply terminates and quits. And we'll have a look at an example of that in a moment. Now, Python has a programming construct to deal with exceptions. And the concept behind it is shown here. Now, I must stress this is not in Python syntax. This is the concepts behind it. So what will happen, we have this word try, and then you can see there's an indent here. And what this string is representing is the fact there's going to be lots of lines of code here, maybe 10 lines of code, whatever it's going to be doing that you require it to do as a program. Let's say reading a file. So the program runs many times, the file's in place, there's been no problems. But the system administrator accidentally deletes the file, this code then runs into problems because the file that it's reading from has disappeared from the operating system. Now under these circumstances we're going to get an exception. Or if there's an attempt here in one of the lines to do a division where the number on the bottom is a zero and you attempt to divide by zero, you're going to get an exception. So in the rare occasions that this exception occurs, you do the code that's here instead, after the word exception. And this is simply code that will report to the user of the program. Oh look, somebody's deleted the file here. Cannot find the file. File is missing or something of that nature. So this is the general structure we have when we're trying to stop exceptions causing programs to well, basically crash. Okay, now let's go on and have a look at the index method that's in Python. And here we've got a snippet of code. And if we look at the first line, it's a string which is assigned never test bathwater with both feet. Now when this line executes, and we look at the execution space, we're going to get an object created, and this object is going to be labelled, it's going to have the name string1 associated with it, or bound to the string. Now, of course, we don't have enough room in the core of this object to show the full string, so we're going to show it here. Now, if we go on to the next line, we can see that index position is assigned, and we've got here a message. This is the dot notation. This is the object that we're going to send this message to. And we can see that in the diagram below. There is the message. And what we're sending with the message is the word water. Now, of course, what this is going to do, it's going to invoke this method here. And this method is going to have a look at the string and see where water is. And in fact, it is here. Now, it'll then say, well, where in the overall string is it? It's at index position 16. So the function will return 16. And of course, this 16 is now returned to the variable index position. And of course now when we come onto this line and print the index position, this is what we get out here. Now those of you who have seen the previous video on the playlist that used the find method might be saying, well this is the same as the find method. Well it isn't, because we'll see why it's not in a moment. Let's now have a look at this computer program here. And you can see it's more or less the same as the one we've just been looking at, except here we can see we have the word the, whereas in the previous program it was the word water. Now, of course, when the first line of this program executes, we look to the execution space and we know we're going to get this object created, this instance of the class. And if we have a close look at the string, it's going to look like this. And you can see every character has a number associated with it. In other words, the index position of the string. Now, the next line of the program, which is this, is going to be responsible for sending a message to the object string underscore one. And the message is going to contain the word index. And in the bracket is going to be the word the, as you can see here. Now what this message is going to do, it's going to invoke the index method, which is shown here. And what the index method is going to do, it's going to have a look at the string, and it's going to look for the word the. And you can see it is not there. What index does in these circumstances, 
is raise an exception. Now, if you remember the last video in the series, we looked at the fine method. And the fine method produced a number minus 1 when it didn't find the substring within a string. The index method does not do this. It actually creates an exception. Now, what that means, this is going to happen. The program effectively crashes, and we get this red text here telling us, look, your program's crashed. Now, we have to, as programmers, say, well, why is it crashed? Well, it does give you some clues. If you look here, it says value error, substring not found. What we have to do as a programmer is say, well, I know index is going to crash when it doesn't find the substring, so I better actually say, right, well, if it's going to crash, it's raising an exception. Let's see if I can write my code in such a way that I take account of the fact that it will raise an exception when the substring is not found. Here you can see a program, and this program has the word try, and it has the word accept in, as you can see. Now this is similar to the structure we looked at a moment ago when we were talking about, well, what's the general structure for ensuring we deal with exceptions that are thrown? Let's have a quick look at the syntax. Here you can see the word try with the colon. If you look here, you can see the program statements have been appropriately indented. If you come here, you can see the word accept. And we have this word value error. I'll tell you what that is in a moment. But here you can see we have the colon. Now, what's going to happen is when this program executes, we have the execution space and we have the object being created, the string object. And this is the content of that particular string. And what the program now is going to do, it's going to say, right, let's try and do these two lines. And it's going to actually send this message here, as you can see. And it's going to look for the word water by invoking this index method. And of course, water is there. It's at index position 16. So it finds the 16th position because that's the start of the word water, and it prints it. So it's returned to index position. We then execute this print statement here. Now, because there was no error, this statement was not executed. So we only execute this if there's been an error when we try to execute these lines of code here. Now let's have a look at this computer program here. And it's more or less the same as the last one we've looked at, except here we have the word the instead of the word water. So when the first line of this particular program executes, if we look to the execution space, we know we're going to get an instance of the string class. And we again, we don't have room for the string to be shown in the middle, so I'll show it here. Now what will happen, we'll have a go at the try, and this will be responsible for this message here. And this message, which is taking the word the with it, will invoke the index method. And what the index method does, it has a look to see if the word the is in the string. And it isn't. So an exception is thrown. As soon as the exception is thrown, the normal flow of the program is not followed. What will happen is we go to here. We go to the line of code that comes after the word accept value error. And of course, it'll print this substring was not found. And if we have a look at the output, we can see that's precisely what it does. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.